Ein Einstein ist das. Let us pray. Oh Lord, my God, when I am, when I consider all the works thy hand hath done, I see the stars, I hear the rolling thunder, thy power throughout the universe dismayed. Then sings my soul, my Savior, God, to thee, how great thou art, how great thou art. Father God, we come to you now, Lord, in the precious name of Jesus. Thank you for all things of life. Father God, we thank you because you are great, God. And we realize how great you are, God. Father God, you're so great, God, that you saw in the beginning of time, God, that we were going to need to be reconciled back to you, God. So you sent your son, Jesus, God, so that whosoever believed in him should not perish but have eternal life. And Father God, we're thankful for that, God. We thank you, Lord, for your many blessings, God. You bless us day after day, week after week, month after month, year after year, God. Father God, you kept us safe from the hands of the enemy, God. And we thank you, Lord, and we praise you, God, and we thank you for it, God. Now, God, we pray, God, to bless West Canaan, God. Bless the man of God who will break the bread of life, God. Bless the leadership. Bless the, bless, bless the parishioners, God. Bless us all, God. He that hath ear, let him hear, God, yes. what the Lord saith, God. And Father God, you've heard the petitions that we said today, God, already. We mentioned the names, God. Father God, we mentioned some of the places, God. Father God, I, we know, God, that you're hearing the cries, Lord, from those who were uh, uh, devastated by the by the weather conditions within the last couple of days, God. But Father God, we know, Lord, that you're still God and that you're still sit on high, Lord, and that you still look low, God, and that you can pick us up, God, from Mother Earth and restore us, God, because you are a restorer, God. And we thank you, Lord, and we praise your name, Jesus. And Father God, we pray, God, you bless those, God, that are on beds of affliction, God. Bless those that may not be in hospital beds, by God, but they may not be feeling well, God. But Father, we know that there is a bomb in Gilead. Father God, we know that by your stripes, God, we're healed, God. And we, Lord, we just pray, God, you bless and anoint, God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. And Father God, when we look at the world situations, what's going on, God? Father God, in your word, it tells us, God, about a tree, Lord, that, that has leaves for the healing of the yes, nations, God. God. Yes. And Father God, we pray, God, if it be your will, God, that you just let some of the sap from that tree, God, yes. fall down in Europe, God, between Russia and the Ukrainian border, God. Father God, we pray, God, you let it drip down between the Ukrainian border and the NATO countries, God. Father God, God, we know that you're in control, God, and we know that you're a mind regulator, God. Yes, God. Father God, we just ask God to have your hand in these things that's going on, God, because we need you and we can't do it without you, God. Yes, yes. Bless all those extended family members who may be in the military, Lord, in far off distance lands, God. Father God, whether they're members or not of this church, God, just bless them, God, because they need you, Lord, and they can't do it without you, God. And Father God, we just pray, God, you be with us, Lord, and keep us, Lord. These blessings we pray in the precious name of Jesus. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Come on and receive our choirs and come in our own way.
Praise God. Again, it's good to be here today. Thank God for our Pastor Emeritus and First Lady, Reverend and Sister Fullwood, and each of you who are part of this worship celebration today. Those who are in the sanctuary who are able to stand in honor of God's word and you at home who choose to do so, turn with me to Psalm 51, three verses for your hearing this morning. Mm -hmm. Psalm 51, verses 10 through 12, and I shall be reading from the New International Version. Create in me a pure heart, O God, mm -hmm and renew a steadfast spirit within me. Do not cast me from your presence or take your Holy Spirit from me. Restore to me the joy of your salvation and grant me a willing spirit to sustain me. I want to talk for a few minutes from the thought, restore to us the joy of your salvation. Amen. You may be seated. Restore to us the joy of your salvation. The third Sunday in this season of Advent is known across the world as Gaudet Sunday. G-A-U-D-E-T-E. -E. Gaudet is the Latin word for joy or rejoice. Biblically, 
it has its basis in Philippians chapter 4, verses 4 and 5, which says, Rejoice in the Lord always. I will say again, rejoice. Let your gentleness be evident to all. The Lord is near. When we think of joy and happiness, most people think that they mean the same thing. But happiness occurs when all is well with you, when you have no pain, when you have no sorrow. Joy, on the other hand, sustains us in seasons of heartache, seasons of injustice and sorrow. Come on. When looking at the devastation caused by the recent tornadoes, it is hard to be happy, but one can find joy knowing that it could have been a whole lot worse. The big difference between joy and happiness is that happiness is a reaction to something great. Mm -hmm. Joy, on the other hand, is the product of someone great. All right. We can find joy because Jesus came down from heaven, died on an old rugged cross, and through his death, provided for us the access to eternal life. Rick Warren says joy is the settled assurance that God is in control to all the details of my life, the quiet confidence that ultimately everything is going to be all right. That means that even when the world around us is spinning out of control because of the joy that we have in Jesus Christ, we can endure the valleys of life that are hurled our way. Because of the joy we have in Jesus, we can hold on until tomorrow, knowing that everything is going to be all right. Since joy is so important to have to be able to make it through the valley of the shadow of death, what happens to cause one to lose their joy? And when you lose it, how do you go and get it back? It is through sin that we lose our joy. And if we are to get it back, we must first of all recognize that we have a problem. We must then acknowledge that we cannot handle it by ourselves. And then we must turn our life over to God and ask God to handle it. Psalm 51 is a cry to God for forgiveness a cry from David to God for God to remove all the junk and garbage in his life and restore unto him the joy of God's salvation. Nowhere in the Bible is the danger of falling into sin more powerfully portrayed than in the life of David, a man described to be after God's own heart. The life of David was indeed interesting, for it was a mixture of virtue as well as vice. Most of us will never achieve the level of greatness as David did, as it related to his love for God, his faith in God, and his unfaltering trust in God. But yet, on the other hand, the chances are that none of us will ever stoop as low as David did in terms of the hideous crimes that he committed. 
David is also known as the king who threw it all away. He threw away the laws of God. He threw away the sanctity of the marriage bond. He threw away his self-respect. He threw away a woman's honor and her reputation. He threw away a man's life. He threw away the person God had called him to be. He threw the way away the person that Samuel had anointed him to be. Well, I know you want to know how David came to throw it all away. One day while relaxing on his balcony, when he should have been at war, David saw a beautiful soul sister, perhaps in a bit of her birthday suit, catching a few rays of sun. And tragically, he surrendered to temptation. He committed adultery with her while her husband Uriah fought Israel's enemies. This woman, Bathsheba, became pregnant because of David's immoral union with her. And in a panic, David brought back her husband from the battlefront with the expectation that he would be reunited with his wife. However, Uriah was loyal to his men. He refused to enjoy the company of his wife. How could he sleep in the comfort and warmth of her arms while his fellow soldiers slept out on the battlefield? When all of David's attempts to make Uriah appear to be the baby's daddy, when they all failed, David arranged for Uriah to be placed on the front lines of the fierce battle. And as you would expect, Uriah was killed. And when David learned that Uriah had been killed, he took back Sheba as his wife, fooled himself into thinking that everything from then on would be smooth sailing. You know, sin has a way of making you think that everything will be all right. For nearly a year, David refused to deal with his shameful sin. He carried the massive burden of his sin on his own. He was completely crushed physically, spiritually, and emotionally beneath the weight of his unbearable sin. He could not eat. He could not sleep. Day and night, he was tortured by his guilty conscience. In addition, God's heavy hand of discipline had crushed him to his bones. But even more tormenting than David's guilty conscience was David's loss of communion with the Lord. His sin had robbed him of the joy and the gladness that he had sprung from living in fellowship with God. He could not even chant his own words that said, the Lord is my shepherd, Come on, preacher. and I shall not want. No doubt he went to church, but the songs did not touch his heart as they once had. He went and sat in the amen corner, tried to say amen, but a man would not fall from his lips. You understand, when David opened the door for sin to enter his life, his joy and his gladness went away. His communion, his relationship with God were not the same anymore. So here in this text, do we have the picture of a man whose life is in tatters, a man who is utterly lost. His spirit is broken. His soul is wounded. He is sick and distressed. 
He has been given a diagnosis. He knows what the disease is. And it's not pretty. He is no longer the face of Israel. But he is the face of sin. And David despised the man that he saw in the mirror. After all, he had used executive privilege to sleep with his neighbor's wife. He had ordered the murder of her husband. Then he tried to do a Richard Nixon, a Watergate, and he tried to cover up the crime. Eventually, God sent the prophet Nathan to confront the king. And when he did, David broke down, ran out in the woods, fell on his knees and prayed the prayer in Psalm 51. So then Psalm 51 is David's heartfelt confession to God. Of all the Psalms, the 51st is one of the best known and loved because it is so personal. My brothers and sisters, we're all guilty of grievous sins. We all are in need of God's abundant grace. In this psalm, David begged God to restore joy to his heart by relieving the excruciating pain of his brokenness. <laughs> After hiding his sin for nearly a year, daily confessed it to the Lord. And you know, that is the first thing that all of us must do. We must confess. The Hebrew word for confess is yada, Y-A-D-A. -A, and it emphasizes acknowledging or declaring our sin to God. The Greek word used in the New Testament, homologia, literally means to say the same thing about, to agree with. So then confessing sin is both admitting our sin to God and then agreeing with God about it. Desperately thirsting for renewed fellowship with God, David humbly asked the Lord, to blot out all of his sin, to completely wash away all his iniquity. By doing so, the Lord's condemnation would cease and the joy of his fellowship with God could be restored. David knew that his sin was always before him. Everywhere he looked, he saw the face of Uriah. Whenever he wrote a letter, he thought about the time that he wrote a letter to Joab to give to Uriah and put him on the front line. He was hunted day and night by the thought of his sins. They went to bed with him at night. They got up with him in the morning. And you know, if you have any Christ in you, I say any Christ, our sins will continually haunt us as well. We call it our conscience. David acknowledged that he had sinned against God in a greater way than he had sinned against Uriah, Bathsheba, his own family, his nation, Joab and himself. He had broken God's holy laws. David was ready to accept whatever judgment God imposed on him. Adultery and murder, serious offenses, and under God's law for Israel, both were punishable by death. David acknowledged that he deserved God's judgment and he knew that God would be justified in whatever sentence he demanded. David understood 
that his sin was the result of what he was, a sinner who fell for short of God's glory and perfection. In fact, he acknowledged that his sinful nature was present from the time that his mother conceived him. All right, preacher. He, even as he grew in his mother's womb, he was a sinner. Mm -hmm. When he was conceived, he inherited the sinful nature of Adam, the first human. David's depraved heart had caused him to do irreversible damage to himself mm -hmm. as well as to others. Never again did he want to give in to his sinful desires. Never again did he want to violently assault others the way that he had Uriah, Bathsheba, and his own family. Never again did he want to experience God's Christian discipline. Therefore, he asked God to radically transform him by creating a clean heart within him. A completely new heart. Pure of fleshly desires. He did not ask God to repair his heart. He did not ask God to rebuild it. He did not ask God to patch it. Patch it up. He realized that his old heart. Was so corroded with filth. That it could not be repaired. David wanted God to start from scratch and make him a brand new heart. He wanted a heart that had never been stained by the pollution of sin. He wanted a new heart so that he could think pure and holy thoughts. He wanted a new heart so that he could think right. So that he could walk right. So that he could talk right. And that he could feel right. So David said. Create in me. Y'all ought to help me preach this. Create in me a, a clean heart. My undergraduate degree is in sociology. One of the greatest theories. Of sociology teaches. That if you can change a person's environment, you can change the person. The implication is if society rids itself of air and water pollution, if it upgrades its education, health care systems, if it eliminates poverty, provides better housing, better jobs, then we will have better people. But sadly, I must report today that even with incremental improvements in all of the above, we still have folks who talk down. We still have folks who walk down. We have people who are still mean. And yes, some of them are just plain the old low down. You know, the problem is not in our environment. But the problem is in, in our heart. Do I have a witness here? I said the problem is in our heart. Not only did David ask for a clean heart. He asked God to renew our steadfast spirit within him. The Lord gave the Holy Spirit to David when Samuel anointed him. Steadfast comes from a verb, which means to make firm or establish. Until this horrible failure, David has stood firm in the face of temptation. Now he asks God, stir him up one more time so that he would be steadfast 
to renew that same enduring spirit that he had once failed. He did not want to lose the blessing. He did not want to lose the help of the spirit. David asked God also in that 11th verse not to reject him. Not to remove the presence of his spirit from him. Psalm now interpret this verse to mean that David feared the possibility of God permanently ending his relationship with David. Psalm say that David feared losing his salvation. However, that is not the case. Notice, if you will, David did not ask God to restore his salvation because he knew it had never been lost. Instead, he asked God to restore the joy. I said joy of his salvation. God's greatest gift to us is his salvation. Yes. Nothing can bring greater joy to our lives than knowing that our sins are forgiven. Yes. That we are living in victory, victory. over sin yes. and that we are basking in God's presence. Yes. David's unconfessed sin had choked the joy out of his heart for nearly a year. But now he wanted to feel the joy of God's salvation just one more time. Yes, David prayed for a clean heart. He prayed for a renewed spirit. He prayed for a repentant soul. He went to the Lord and told the Lord that he had fallen from righteousness to wretchedness, from happiness to loneliness. He had fallen all the way from being a homemaker to being a homebreaker. But David also knew that if he was to get his joy back, then his heart had to be clean. David wanted a clean heart because there is joy in having a clean heart. David wanted a clean heart so that he would never ever again be deprived of the spirit of God. And I can see David on his knees saying, Now, Lord, I know I've lost my joy when I go to church and I hear Zion's songs. They just don't move me anymore. Lord, if you will, why don't you give me back my joy? I want to feel your power moving on the main altars of my heart. I want to know that even when my back is against the wall, uh -huh. I want to know that you are with me. with me. And I can do that if I can feel yes. your joy. <laughs> yes, I got to leave you here. But many believers who have committed terrible sin feel they have no hope or that things can never be the same again. <laughs> But you need to know today God's grace. I said God's grace. God's grace is greater than our sin. Romans 5 and 20 says, where sin increased, grace increased all the more. Ain't God all right? You need to know if you lost your joy, you can be restored to God. We can be forgiven. We can be cleansed. God, anybody know about God? God can bring peace to a guilty conscience. We can know 
the joy of fellowship with God one more time. We can enter God's presence one more time. We can be cleansed. We can receive God's strength just one more time. Ain't God all right? I got to leave you now. But this been a long year. Yes, I made some mistakes this year. I've said some things I should not have said. Perhaps I've done some things I should not have done. But right now, Lord, I want to feel, I want to feel your joy. I wonder today, is there anybody here? Do you want to feel his joy? You want his joy on the inside. You want his joy down in your bones. You want his joy all over you. This joy that I have. The world didn't give it to me. The world can't take it away. Joy to the world. The Lord has come. Do you know him? Say yes. Yes. He'll restore your joy. Put running in your feet. Clapping in your hands. Joy. 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 Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He'll restore his joy. That was David's prayer. That can be our prayer. We can all know that the power of the spirit in our life lives. Y'all remember Jesus Christ purchased our redemption out on the cross. Yes. Everything that we had lost, the cost of sin, we can have it all back. Joy that the devil stole from us, we can have it all back. He gives it back to us, but we have to confess, come to him sincerely, ask him for his forgiveness. And trust me, he'll give you your joy back. Come on, give God a hand clap of praise. Lord, the church is open. Choir is going to come at this hour. Uh -huh.
wonderful. Yeah, yes. Come on, let's bless the name of the Lord. Put our hands together. Amen. He is wonderful. Amen. As we prepare now to uh, leave this place, uh, those of you who are preparing to give, it is our prayer that you would give as God has given so richly unto you. Uh, we thank God. Malachi chapter 3, verses 8 through 10. Will a mere mortal rob God? Yet you rob me, but you ask, how are you robbing me in tithes and offerings? You are under a curse, your whole nation, because you are robbing me. Bring the whole tithe into the storehouse. There may be food in my house. Test me in this, says the Lord Almighty, and see if I will not throw open the floodgates of heaven. Pour out so much blessing, there will not be room enough to store it. Those of us who are tithers, you know how much God gives to you. Stuff comes from places you don't even expect it. Amen. 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 You're not Amen. even expecting. You're able to make yes. ends. We're talking about the ends meet. Yeah. Amen. You're able to make the ends meet. Now, Brother Wade used to say you couldn't make the ends meet sitting on them. <laughs> but then it's got to the point that we, we sit on them and still make it. <laughs> Some of y'all don't know about Brother Wade, do you? Uh, let's see. That's, that goes back that's, that's WDIA bless my bone, bone way <laughs> <Woo -ha. laughs> amen I remember Woo -ha. Yeah. the old bless my bone way amen but we thank God that he gives us so much you know I was um, I was telling my brother and I think he's on he's at my mom's house and I told him I said you know before I knew about the tornado I said when I got up yesterday morning and I didn't know everything that happened and uh, Sister Bonnie I looked out and I said oh Lord hallelujah I don't have to rake these leaves <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, you know it's like my excitement was in not having to rake leaves because they went on I don't know where they went <laughs> but they were gone but then there was a state of sadness when I found that those weed leaf that wind that took my leaves away took lives. And when I saw Mayfield and Bowling Green, I mean, you just can't help but feel. And I hope that I know we are doing stuff for Christmas, but certainly we want to make sure we're giving something to the Red Cross. I know we're going to do that. Amen. Personally, we need to send our own personal checks. Amen. Can you imagine? I'm, I'm going to get out of here, but can you imagine? I mean, you saw the devastation. A tornado that stayed on the ground 200 miles. People trying to, you know, work in a candle factory. Probably not making a lot of money. But God has no respect to people. And just like that. Right at Christmas time. And this is not, and I'm going to get out of here, but this is not the first time. Uh, we know that whenever the temperatures get hot, hot like it does, that we're praying, Lord, Lord, please, 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 spare us. Spare us. You know, it's 80 degrees in December. Lord, please, we know what the end result is is and God spares some and you see some houses it just skip over mm -hmm. then other houses is just demolished but we turned over most of us went on back to sleep and God watched over us and he does that day in and day out so we ought to rejoice we have much to thank God for I said we have much to thank God for but let's not forget those who lost loved ones and homes and jobs and everything. And let's take a little bit that we have, not only from West Canaan, but out of our personal pockets and those charities that are there to try to help them. Let's give. Come on, let's stand. We're getting out of here. Father God, as we come to the end of this celebration,
this blessed worship. We thank you for what our eyes have seen, ears have heard, hearts have felt. We thank you for a restoration of your joy that you would move within us, that we may feel the joy of your salvation. And Father God, in spite of all that's going on, we have your joy in knowing that Jesus Christ, the Savior of the world, Father God, he's with us through all that we go through. Yeah, yeah. Even with those who've lost loved ones, who've lost houses, Jesus is still with us. As I saw one minister said, the fact that a city was destroyed does not mean an indictment that it's just the sin part of it, but there is sin in the world. But Father God, we know that these things will be. So, Father God, just keep us, hold us in the hollow of your hand. Thank you. Keep us safe from all hurt, harm, or danger. Mm -hmm. And now as we leave this place, but never from your presence, yeah. go with us. Forgive us of our own sins, those yeah. things we've done, contrary to your word or your will. Be with us now. And, Father God, even as we prepare for our final business meeting on tomorrow night, bless us, Father. Amen. Let us be able to prepare our hearts, prepare our minds, that we may be able to come together and do things decently and in order. Amen. Be with us now and forever. And now may the grace of God, love and Holy Spirit of the Holy Spirit be with us now and forever. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. 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 Next Sunday, call somebody. Uh, we want to look at Christmas through the eyes of the shepherds. You don't want to miss that. Amen. Bro. Next Sunday, Christmas through the eyes of the shepherd. God bless each of you.